So here we go for a workout. We're going to start with running in place one minute. And as always, for this first minute, keep it nice and light and easy. Just saying good morning to our lower leg complex. What do we got here? All right, hey, how's it going? Good. We just started, so get you, you know, take your time. We're just doing the initial warm up. Oh, I suppose I would need my timer to see. My timer turned off. Hold on. Keep going. Okay. Now you're going to sit down on the ground, and your feet are going to be really wide apart. We're going to put our arms in an M position, lift our chest nice and high, and then what I want you to do is drive your right shoulder blade as far into rotation as you can, and hold for a couple seconds, and then go to the left side. Drive your left shoulder blade far into rotation as you can. And you can go back and forth at your own pace. Go right side, and then left side. If you can, try to inhale as you rotate and exhale when you get to the end range. And that little exhale will help you push a little further. Okay, let's go back up on our feet. And this time we're going to become a little more nimble on our feet. So we can change our positions. We can go external rotation. We can go internal rotation. External or internal. Good. Nice and light. And then remember when we're running in place, we want to lean into it a little bit with our upper body. We don't want to be leaning back. We want to get leaning a little bit into it. Keeping our core engaged. Keeping our hip flexors engaged. And helping with better extension in the hip. If we were running, actually. Okay. Next exercise. We're going to be sitting back down. Uh, on the floor, our legs are wide, but they're bent. The knees are bent. So get your legs wide, bend your knees, keep your heels on the ground, in position, same exercise. Rotate. The only difference now is we're slightly leaning back and our legs are bent. Inhale as you rotate. Exhale at the end range. All right. Okay, come back up. And we're going to do running in place again. So this time, uh, you can change knee height. So you can go high knees, and then you can do butt kicks. High knees, and then butt kicks, okay? Make sure you stay leaning forward. And we got it. Next exercise. So this time your legs can be together. Your legs can be elevated, but knees are straight. Now we're going to have to bend our elbows a little bit, get into that M position, and rotate. 
So this time, we're really trying to fire up our rec rectus femoris muscle, our big quad muscle, by keeping those knees straight. The hip flexors are stabilizing us as our obliques do all the rotation work. Keep the chest lifted. Try to keep that lower back neutral the best you can. We don't want to be too rounded in that lower back. <clears throat> if we could prevent it, that would be best. All right. Woo. Burning quads. Okay. Woo. Let's go right into mobility. Uh, you're going to put your right foot forward. We're doing some hip openers. Right foot forward. Left knee's on the floor. Put your hands right on your right leg. Push that right knee over your little toes. Push it, push it deep over those little toes. Okay? Make sure your right foot or heel stays on the ground. And then you're going to squeeze your left glute and push that left front pocket forward. Okay? So we're stretching out the left front pocket and we're mobilizing the right ankle. All right, let's bring it back. Slide your heel forward a little bit. Lock that right knee out, or I shouldn't say lock, but straighten it, and then push your butt back. So you're gonna push your butt over your left foot, and you're gonna just keep your right uh, leg straight. You're gonna keep your chest lifted, nice neutral spine. Okay, let's go back to slide your foot back. Let's go back into that driving the knee forward over the ankle. This time you'll feel that you have more range of motion and your ankle is a little less stiff. Squeeze the left glute, getting a little stretch on that left front pocket, and let's slide it back. You can slide the heel forward a little bit, push your butt over your left foot, right leg is straight, get a nice hamstring stretch, keeping the back neutral. All right. Now we're going to take that leg um, and we're going to push, well, we're going to put our, keep our, I'm sorry, that's the next one. We're going to keep our foot where it is, grab the floor with your left hand, push your left hip towards your right ankle. All right, so I'm just pushing, I'll show you at this angle. I'm pushing my left hip towards my right ankle. My right knee is still traveling forward. My right heel is still connected to the floor. My shoulder blades are pinched down our back. Okay? From this, we can go back, bring our knee back, get into a plank, put your right knee right between your hands, right in the middle of your hands, and now push your left front pocket, push it right down towards your right heel. Okay? Don't confuse this with a, with a pigeon pose or any kind of yoga move. This is totally different. Right knee between our hands and our left pocket is going down towards our heel. I shouldn't say it's totally different, I just don't want you to confuse it. Okay, let's go to our left side. I'll show you from this camera angle. Left foot is forward, right knee's on the ground, hands on the left leg, push that left knee over the little toes. Good, we're gonna squeeze our right glute, we're gonna drive that right front pocket forward, trying to stretch out the front hip, and we're mobilizing the left ankle. Our left heel is connected to the floor. Do not let that lift up. All right, let's slide back. We slide that left heel forward a little bit to straighten out the left leg. Let's push our hips way back over our right foot, keeping our chest elevated, keeping a nice neutral spine. You're gonna feel a nice stretch in your hamstring. Good. All right, let's go forward. So you can bring that foot back to, uh, left foot back to normal position. Push the left knee over the little toes. You should see, feel that your ankle's a little more mobile. The knee's traveling a little further forward. Our heel is still glued to the ground. Squeeze the right glute, stretching out the right hip flexor. Nice work, okay? You can come back, let's go into that hamstring. We're pushing our hip over our right foot. Our neutral spine, we're gonna feel the left hamstring stretching. Okay, 
Let's go back to the one knee. Put our right hand on the floor to stabilize us. Push that right shoulder blade down our back and then rotate the right hip towards the left ankle. Okay, squeeze the glutes and make sure those shoulder blades are moving down your body. All right, let's go back to our knees, both knees on the ground. Put your left knee right between your hands and then we're gonna sit our right uh, front pocket towards our left foot. All right, right front pocket's going down towards the left foot. All right. Now let those shoulder blades, focus on your shoulder blades right now. Push those shoulder blades down your back. Get your triceps engaged so that we can use the floor to help us push the shoulder blades down the back. All right. Very good. Okay, I'm going to show you from this angle. We're going to be in a plank. So uh, let's walk through this with me. Go ahead, go up into a plank. And you're going to walk your feet forward. Go all the way forward until your heels can touch the floor. You can bend your knees. All right? Now don't go too far forward or else you'll never get your heels down. Your hands have to stay connected to the floor. Okay? And then we're going to walk the feet back to a plank, drop your hips down towards the floor, pinch the shoulder blades back together, look up at the ceiling. Push, push your chest towards the ceiling. Use your glutes to squeeze and push that chest forward and up. Drop your head down to chin down to your chest. Roll your spine one vertebrae at a time up to the ceiling. Once your butt goes as high as it can, Walk your feet forward. All right, walk those feet back. We're in a plank, we're gonna drive, we're gonna squeeze our butt, drive the hips down, shoulder blades come together, lift the chest, look at the ceiling. Squeeze the glutes, roll the chin to the chest, one vertebrae at a time up to the ceiling. When our butt is as high as we can, we walk our feet forward. Walk the feet back. Let's go back to our plank. We're going to squeeze our glutes, driving the hips down. We're going to lift the chest by bringing our shoulder blades together. Look up at the ceiling. Roll the chin to the chest. One vertebrae at a time, up to the ceiling. Once we make it to our butt, walk the feet forward. Woo. All right, we've got one more. Walk back in a plank. Squeeze the glutes. Lift the chest. Shoulder blades back. Head up. Chin down to the chest. Roll the spine up to the ceiling. And good. All right. Next exercise, we're gonna go through this. We're gonna sit on our butt, reach forward with our hands. Hands are connected to the ground, elbows are straight. Once we're in this position, slide your shoulder blades down your back and now drive into the floor with our hands. As you're driving, you're pushing through your triceps, then your lats, and then your stomach. Keep pushing. All right, inhale, exhale, lower your chest. Put your head on the ground. Bend your elbows. Our elbows are connected to the ground. Our head is connected to the ground. Touch your fingertips together, but not your palms. Fingertips are together, your palms are not touching. Move your elbows in closer to your ears. Alright, so we're going to start the strength work. Um, you're going to need, like I said, you're going to need a chair, a table, or a couch. And we're going to uh, need a floor, you know, area. So, first exercise. Let's get right into it. Let me just set my timer. Okay, 
Let's get into it. We're going to sit on our, our stool, our uh, surface, and we're going to do tricep dips. So I want you to keep your butt and your uh, butt as close to the table or the bench as you can. Keep the chest elevated. And go ahead and dip your hips down and then straighten the elbows. All right, so it goes from a bent elbow position to a straight elbow position. We're going to be doing 10 of these. Go ahead. We got three, four, five, nice and slow. Six, make sure you keep them slow. Seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, take a seat on the floor. We're going, uh, you're going to, doesn't matter what you do with your legs, if you want them wide or close, that's fine. You're going to put your arms out into a T. And we're doing hummingbirds, 30 seconds. In three, two, one, go. All we're doing is bumping our arms up and down fast as we can in short range of motion. And try to push this. Put the energy into your shoulder blades. Get it away from your neck. Get it down into the middle of your back. And feel your shoulder blades kind of sliding up and down a little bit on your rib cage. We got 10 more seconds. Keep that chest lifted. Three, two, one. One, all right, back to our bench dips. Or our tricep dips. All right, everybody's set. And here we go. Go ahead and go down. Keep your back as close to the surface as you can. I mean, as to the bench as you can. Keep your chest elevated. Make sure you go in the full extension of the elbows on the way up and we get as low as we can handle on the way down. And when I say that, if you go too low, your chest is gonna collapse forward, you're gonna round your lower back. That's gonna to be too low. You can gain a lot more tension on your tricep with a shorter range of motion and better posture. And I think that's 10. Let's go back down to the ground. <clears throat> Seated on the ground, I'm going to show you sideways. We're going to try to keep that back nice and neutral. Chest is lifted, arms are out to the side. And three, two, one, go ahead. Again, put that energy into the shoulder blades. The shoulder blades are moving up and down slightly. We're moving our arms as fast as we can. Keeping nice, strong triceps. Elbows are straight. Elbows have to be straight during this exercise. Get those triceps on. Five seconds. And good. Let's go back to our bench. All right, so our last set. Let's make it nice and slow. I'll count with you. And let's elevate our butt off the bench. Go ahead and drop the glute or the hips and up. One, down, two, three, up. Good. Let's tempo it down. One, two, down, up. One, two, three, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, four, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, five, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, six, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, seven, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, eight, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, nine, down. One, two, three, up. One, two, ten, ouch. Woo, all right. Let's go back to the ground. We're sitting upright, arms are straight out, our elbows are straight, triceps engaged, and three, two, one, 
hummingbirds. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. All right. Next stuff. Good, good, good. We're going to be doing calf, uh, soleus calf raises and a prone um, hummingbird. Okay. I'll show you that one. So first, I need you to find a surface you can hold on to. Uh, an arm of a chair, a wall, anything like that is good. What you got to be able to do is get into a squat position and hold it, all right? You don't have to do it now, I just want you to be able to do that. Okay, so looks like everybody's got something. Yes, perfect. Okay, let's go down into our squat. Your knees have to be 90 degrees. Okay, get that down here. So if you want to put your hands to help you on your leg, that's fine. This isn't about your legs or your upper legs, it's about your lower leg. Now go ahead and lift the heels as high as you can and bring them back down. Go ahead and give me 20 of those. I'll let you go at your own pace, but do it with control. We got 20 of these. Okay, hopefully you got 20. Okay, next exercise. You're on the ground, you're face down, but I'm going to just show you up here. I'm going to be face down on the ground, our arms are out, and we're doing hummingbirds like this. Okay, so let's go down on the ground. We're lying down. You can put your forehead on the floor if you want, or you don't have to. But most important is that you draw your belly button off the floor. Okay, belly button's off the floor, arms are up to your side, extended. <sighs> Lift your arms off the floor with your, with your shoulder blades. Keep those shoulder blades down your back. And let's go in three, two, one, hummingbirds. Keep that, those belly buttons off the floor. Use your shoulder blades. You should feel your shoulder blades coming together and slightly separating. About 10 seconds. Let's go back onto our feet. Let's go hold on to our object. Go back into a squat. I'll give you 10 seconds. Here we go in five, four, three, two, full squat. Let's lift those heels 20 times. Nicely controlled.
once you got 20 of those, I think everybody made it. All right, let's go back down to the, to the ground. Let's do our hummingbirds. We're lying down. Our arms are straight out to the side. This time, let's see if we can elevate the knees so the kneecaps are off the floor. Our toes are pushed down to the floor. Belly buttons drawn in. Knees are elevated. Shoulder blades, push them together and lift your arms. And let's go. 30 seconds. Short movements, quick movements. We got about 10 seconds left. All right, back up on our feet. Let's get one more set of soleus. Listen, if your so if your lower legs are at are on fire, don't do 20 reps in this next round. If you're feeling okay with those lower legs, not the quads, the quads are going to burn. The lower legs, if the lower legs are burning up already. Either skip this set or just do a few reps. Here we go. Let's get into our squat position and go ahead on your own pace, your own count. Your own amount of reps. Mostly probably burns your quads up than anything. Okay, let's go down to the floor. We got one more set of hummingbirds. Let's draw our belly buttons off the floor. Arms are extended out to the side. Shoulder blades are pinched together and down on your back. Lift the arms and go. Use those shoulder blades. You'll see that you have more control using the shoulder blade. That's your rhomboids, mid traps, lower traps, than using your deltoids. Deltoids are the muscles immediately surrounding your shoulders. And that's 30. Woo! start the workout. So um, just watch as I demonstrate. We got our tie bow. The tie bow exercise is our hands are next to our hips. That's important to remember. Hands are next to the hips. They're not back here. We're going to lean back to counterweight our legs. Our feet are not going to touch each other. They can touch the floor, but they can't touch each other. And we're going to just bring the knees to the chest. So think from those NF strength and conditioning guys, just think knees to chest. Knees to chest, okay? The tie bow oblique is the same thing but on the side. So imagine we're in those book openers. We're doing like a book opener. But we're going to go back into our book opener. We're going to keep our hand attached to the floor. That's going to, that's going to assist the movement. And then I'm going to do knees to elbows. Knees to elbows, hands on the floor. You have to bring the upper body and the lower body up and together and down together. Okay, that's very important. If you don't move the upper and lower body together, you're not going to be able to do it. Lateral lunges, very easy. We step to the right, we squat on the right leg, we throw ourselves back on the right, with the right leg. So think, throw and catch, throw. Catch, throw, okay? Right leg, boom. It's like a, I like to call it like a one-legged squat with a kickstand. One-legged squat with a kickstand, 
Okay? And it's not alternating. You do the right side ten times, then you do the left side. No alternating. Okay, tricep dips. We're going to need that bench or table, and we're going to right back to those tricep dips that we just did, except we're moving quickly. So we're going to catch ourselves and throw, catch and throw, catch and throw. So always start and stop up here, catch and throw, catch and throw. All right, here we go with our workout. Um, make sure I got the right angle. Okay, and three, two, one, go. Starting with our 10 Tai Mo uh, exercises. The hips or the feet do not touch each other. They can touch the floor. Hands are next to the hips. We're just doing 10. All right, once we get 10, we go line our side. And we're gonna do those obliques. Upper and lower body move together. The hand that's on the floor, make sure you use that arm. You wanna use that arm to help you lift your upper body. Really stretch out those obliques. That helps you fire them back up to lift your body. Let's push those hips back when we do these lunges. The hips go back. The knee does, travels forward, but not too much. And we want to keep our chest lifted. We don't want to dump the chest. Keep the chest lifted. Keep your torso stable. Nice neutral posture. Make the glute do the work. Remember on the tricep dips, keep your back close to your bench or your chair. Good work. Keep moving.
job everyone we are at the five minute mark So I think I said it was going to take us just under 10. It's going to take us just over 10. Probably somewhere between 10 and 14 minutes. Six minutes. Keep it in the glute. Keep those lunges in the glutes. Keep the chest elevated in the dips. Don't collapse that body. Do your best. You don't have to go super low. More important to get this, the extension of the triceps or the elbow. Right. Seven minutes. Eight minutes. That's it. Catch yourself in the lunge. Spring yourself back. Nine minutes.
Ten minutes. Eleven minutes. Whew. Wow. Good work, everyone. Keep going. Nice job. Good work, Roseanne. You did it, Roseanne? Nice work, everybody.